I'm Jeremy and I'm a product specialist at Abstract. In this video, we're going to look at how to export your textures and materials as images in Instamat Studio. Let's get started. Okay, so here we are in Instamat Studio and the first example I'd like to show you is when creating a material in the canvas using an element graph. So you can see here that I have this bamboo material that I've been working on and I'd like to export my material out as images at a particular resolution. Now, the first thing I need to do is make sure that I've created some graph outputs. These graph outputs tell Instamat what information you would like to export when creating those images. Now, there are a couple ways to create outputs. Uh, one way is by going over to the graph object editor panel and going to the output section and clicking the plus button. And so depending on the type of output you need to create, you can select the format here. So if I were to create an output for base color, that's color information, I need to use the element image type. So I can go ahead and uh, click that here. It's going to create an output and I can just double click and say, let's call this base color. And you can see that Instamat Studio automatically recommends that I call this base color and it's going to give it the material output category. So that's one way to create an output. Another way is by uh, left clicking and dragging from an output like this base color output here. You'll notice that I'm using a node called the material finalize node. And the material finalized node is really useful to just finish up a material that we're creating in the canvas. It has a lot of very useful parameters and effects that can just tie the material together at the very end and also gives us some really nice parameters like the normal strength and height blur parameters that are really useful to expose to the user later on when they want to adjust some of the materials properties. Now, what's nice about the material finalized node, as I was mentioning, is we have all of our outputs that we need for a PBR material here. So what I could do is I could left click and drag a connection from the base color output and let go to bring up quick search. And you can see we have this action here that says expose base color as graph output. I can double click that and we now have our base color output. But there's a quicker way to create outputs here from a node like this, and that's by right clicking the node and choosing expose output parameters. Now you can see we have all of our outputs here. I can just select all and choose expose and Instamat creates graph outputs for all of the outputs for that node. So now that I've created my graph outputs, I can now use Instamat's export dialog to export my images. And we can find this by going to the curved arrow here at the top. And so if I go ahead and click on that, you can now see we have the image and data output export dialog here. And so this dialog contains everything we need to export our graph information into files. And I say files because the element graph allows you to create and process more than just images. You can process images, meshes, and even point clouds in the same graph. And so this dialog will adapt depending on the information connected to your graph outputs. And so in this case, we have just images. So let's take a look at some of these settings here. First, you can see we have the output path, and so that's where we're going to export our images. Then we have the file name format, and this allows us to create our own file naming convention here using a set of variables. So for example, I could call this bamboo, and you can see we have a preview here. So we're going to use the output name, dash format, and then the width and height. And so that's what we're going to see when we export all of our maps, except this base color will update with the name of the output, which would be, for example, you know, base color, emissive or normal. Just below the file name format, we have the image file format extension, and you can choose the file format for your images. We can also choose the bit depth when exporting our images. And one thing that's really nice here is uh, we have the format settings. Now these format settings are separate from the execution settings that we have when working in the graph. So what we can do here, you can see that I'm working in 2K here when I'm working in the graph, but when I want to export my map, I have a separate set of settings here, which allow me to export at a different resolution. So in this case, when I export my maps, I want to export them out at 4K. Below this, you can see all of our image and data outputs here, including all the ones that we exposed when we uh, selected to export outputs from the material finalized node. And next up, you can see we have this export template area. And so I'm going to go into more detail about templates in the next section, but we can choose one here if we'd like. Now, if I'd like to export my images, all I have to do is go down and click export and Instamet will execute the graph and export all of my images. 
I also wanted to mention this live output button. And what this allows us to do is once it's enabled, if you make a change in the graph or in the project that you're working on, Instamet will automatically export a new set of images. So for example, if you're working in another application or render engine that is constantly monitoring the input textures and images in the scene, if you go ahead and make a change in Instamat, uh, Instamat will export the new maps and then those changes will be reflected in your render engine. Now, next up, I wanted to show you what it's like to export images when working in something like an asset texturing project using Instamat's layering UI. So here we are in the Instamat Crate project, and you can actually find this project in Instamat Studio by creating a new project, going to layering, and then going to the templates and tutorial section and choosing the Instamat Crate. So let's say, for example, I have finished texturing my asset, and now I'd like to export my textures and materials out for this crate as images. And so again, what we can do is go to the curved arrow here to bring out that image and data export dialog. And so I can now go ahead and choose which outputs I'd like to use. Now, layering projects provide a lot more information that we can use when exporting images, everything from the mesh maps to the PBR information that we might need. So I think this is a great example in showing how we can create an output template to make it a lot easier to export just the information that we need. So I'm going to go over here to the output template configuration section, and you can see if I click this down arrow here, we have some built in templates. So for example, if I wanted to export this out uh, specifically for a configuration for RSX engine, you can see we can do that here. And so what we have here is a table and every row is an output image. And you can see that we can do things like uh, doing channel packing here, where we can combine things like the ambient occlusion, roughness and metalness information into the red, green and blue channels of a particular image map. So let's go ahead and quickly create a template here. I'm going to go ahead and click the plus button and I'll go and uh, call this. Let's just call this my template. And you can provide a description if you need to. I'll just go ahead and hit OK. So what I can do here is I can now drag any of these output templates here. You can see there's a large assortment of options here, or you can create your own. In this case, let's say that I want to include the base color information as a single separate texture map when I export. So I'm going to go ahead and left click and drag base color onto this section here where the red, green and blue is for the first map, let go and I'm going to choose map as RGBA. You can see it names the output here and we now map the red, green, blue and alpha information to the respective channels for this output. And so if I wanted to, I could also go ahead and say, let's grab the roughness and drag it in here. And now I can export a roughness map. Now, let's say I'd like to pack a bunch of my outputs into one image map into the red, green and blue channels of the image. Let's go ahead and do that here. So now I'm going to go ahead and delete the roughness map and I'm going to add a custom output. I'll choose RGBA and let's say that I want to pack the roughness, metalness and ambient occlusion into one map. So I can go ahead and find the roughness and go and drag it into the red. I'll go ahead and find the metalness and bring it into the green and the ambient occlusion and pack it into the blue. And that's all you need to do to pack all that information into the different channels of an output texture map. So now you can see here that some of these outputs here from our project are, uh, you know, not grayed out. The rest are grayed out and these are highlighted and that's because these ones are active. You can see they have the toggle here on the right. So we know that these outputs are in use. We can also go down here and we can see that these are the uh, output maps that we're going to get the two images that Instamat is going to create when we click export. So now all I have to do is go ahead and make sure that I have my output path, all of my settings ready to go, and I can go ahead and choose export to create my images. Thanks for watching this video on exporting your textures and materials out as images using Instamat Studio. Now, if you'd like to learn more about creating dynamic procedural textures and materials, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Here we have an ever expanding library of videos covering the ins and outs of Instamat. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, drop us a comment below and don't forget to subscribe. For the latest news about Instamat, please visit our website and follow us on Twitter. You can find all the links in the video description below. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next one.